All right. Got a good one today. I know I say that a lot, but what can I say? A lot of them are good ones. Today's topic is basically going to be how to do almost any workout in 30 minutes or less. This is a subject that has been on my mind a lot recently, given the fact that our little girl is 14 weeks old as of today, and as I've been very open and honest about, she's got some stuff going on from colic to reflux that make her the polite way for me to say it is very, very challenging. And while any baby would be quite demanding of a parent's time, the baby that has been bestowed upon us it takes that to another level. Uh, demanding uh, does not quite come close. So time is a very valuable and precious commodity. So how to get in darn near any workout that you want to do in 30 minutes or less. It can be done. And it doesn't have to be because you're a new parent. Something in your life changed, stress levels, other commitments, job, you've got a longer commute. For whatever reason, you find yourself with no more than 30 minutes a day to work out. Can it be done? Short answer, yes. The other part is, my goodness. People try to make this more complicated than it is. So let me say, don't worry about it. It's really not that hard to figure out how to either create a workout or take whatever the workout is on any given day and shoehorn it into a 30 minute window. I'm gonna give you some tips, some real life examples, and then you will be 100% good to go to take this kind of recipe and just repeat it as frequently as you can, either for the rest of your life, if you never get more free time, or just every now and then when you have to. So, that's it. Okay, here we go. In an ideal world, which we don't always live in all the time, you would have ample time to do a beautiful warm-up, do the actual workout, and then do a great cool-down and stretching. How nice would that be? And luckily, a lot of us are afforded that opportunity a tremendous amount of the time. But, you know, what happens when you can't do it? So, um, the first thing you may or may not realize is just if you were really honest with yourself, how much potentially you just dilly-dally when you walk out into the garage or your living room or the gym or wherever to actually warm up and work out. I'm acutely aware of this because as it turns out, I tend to dilly-dally get lost in my thoughts or pick up my phone or whatnot during the warm-up. So a warm-up that takes me 15 minutes somehow takes my wife seven to 10 minutes. And she's like, let's go. What's, what, what are you still doing? How, how is this taking you this long? So a lot of us could probably just tighten up what we're already doing and there would be some very precious minutes that you could get back right there. So, so analyze yourself like that. But let's say that that's not the case. You're very diligent and focused when you go in there. And again, time is just, you're in a bit of a time crunch. Okay. So everything that I'm going to talk about right now may not be ideal, but it's real. This is real talk, right? Because like I said, in the perfect world, time's not an issue. Take all the time you need to warm up, to work out, to cool down and to go home. But something now has shifted in your life and you're faced with this issue, make it happen in 30 minutes, or the other option is you're gonna convince yourself, well, I'm just not gonna work out today. I don't wanna see that happen. Because like we've said a bunch at CrossFit Lynchman, and I truly believe this, I don't like the phrase, something's better than nothing. Because what I, what I think that gets into people's heads is that, again, something is better than nothing. That implies that doing something is just marginally better than doing nothing. Like, eh, at least you did something better than nothing. I disagree with that. I think doing something is infinitely better than doing nothing. Orders of magnitude better than doing nothing. And so if we can get somebody to do something, even if it's not ideal, I think you're winning. I think that's a huge success. So that's kind of where this is all coming from. Possibilities may include 
the first round as a warm-up, right? We've all heard about this, we've joked about this, but there could be times in your life where that's just how it's going to go down. Not ideal, uh, but real. But that might not be needed as frequently as you think. I'm going to walk through the workouts that took place last week on CrossFit Lynchpin and see the workouts that occurred five days over the course of the week. We've got rest days on Thursdays and Sundays, so five workouts. If you only had 30 minutes, what would you have had to do last week? Every week wouldn't play out like this, but this is a pretty darn good example of how much you can do in 20 minutes. So last week on Monday, we had a disgusting workout. It was 21-15-9 reps for time of a devil's press and knees to elbows. Devil's press was with a pair of 35-pound dumbbells for men, 25s for women. That workout, depending upon your level of you know fitness, could be sub-10 minutes to 12 to 14 minutes, let's say. It was a nasty workout. Fitness was achieved. You were not shortchanged with that. But let's go on the high side with that. Let's say it took 15 minutes to do that workout. If you have a 30-minute window, you're golden. You can certainly warm up for that, knock out the workout, and even have a little bit of time left over for stretching. So on Monday, you were fine. 30 minutes, who cares? On Tuesday, well, now things are a bit different. Tuesday was linchpin test five, which is for time, 20 back squats, at 225 for men, 155 for women, then a two mile run, and then you end with another set of 20 back squats at that loading. That's a long workout, and not only is it a long workout, but you need to warm up to do a bunch of reps at that squat loading. So there's a fair amount of warming up involved for most people also. And that workout, depending upon where you fall with your fitness level, if you smashed it out of the park, you did it around 20 minutes, which is crazy. But a tremendous amount of people is going to take you 30 minutes to do that workout. So, well, you can't walk into the gym and do a 30-minute workout because you haven't even warmed up for that squat loading yet. So that doesn't make any sense. Well, if for most people that's a 30-minute workout, we could just simply reduce it by a third or reduce it by a half. And now... Instead of starting off with 20 back squats, maybe it's it's a set of 10 instead of the 20. Instead of the two mile run, a one mile run. And then you end with another set of 10 back squats. So we have reduced the volume by 50% and most likely reduced the time significantly that it would take to knock out that workout. And again, if we're talking about you doing something or you doing nothing, do you think you're going to be shortchanged with 10 back squats at that loading, a one mile run, and then another 10 back squats in that loading when the other option was, ah, screw it, I'm just going to sit on the couch? Absolutely not. Huge victory. You crushed it. Good to go. So we can do things like that, make that happen. Just figure out what the actual time would be, reduce it in half. You're solid. And that's a long day's worth of training, but we can make it work. Maybe. It's just going to take you too long to work up to that loading, 225 for men and 155 for women. Here's some things that some other people have to get into their head that if you don't do some workout, some aspect of the workout, if you modify some aspect, that that workout no longer has value because you've changed it. That's toxic. Get that out of your head. Maybe it's going to take you, let's speak for the gentleman, too long to warm up to a 225 back squat, but you can warm up to a 155 or a 185, who cares? Do the workout at 155 or do the workout at 185? Because again, let's get back to the main point here. You're squatting with a barbell on your back and then going for a run and then squatting some more. So okay, the loading was a bit less than the quote unquote prescribed whoop de doo You got in a workout. You put some fitness in the bank that day. Mission accomplished. The next day, Wednesday on Lynchman, was a 30-minute EMOM. Minute one was six bar muscle-ups. Minute two, 20 GHD sit-ups. Minute three was rest. It was one of my favorite minutes. Then minute four, 10 strict ring dips. Minute five, 50 double-unders. And minute six, rest. Okay, that's 30 minutes. 
I'm acutely aware of how this one went because I, on this particular day, due to our young daughter that was, she was quite needy that day, I walked out into the gym with 30 minutes to make this happen. And so there was no warmth that took place, no nothing. So how I did this workout, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to just jump right into bar muscle. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen for me. <laughs> My shoulders need to get warmed up. That's not the athlete that I am. So what I replaced this with was each minute for me, um, when the six bar muscle-ups should have taken place, I did 10 strict pull-ups. Now that worked for me. Maybe for you, it would have been 10 strict pull-ups also. Maybe it would have been eight. Maybe it would have been six. Maybe it would have been ring rows at whatever level of difficulty makes sense for you for 10 repetitions. I bumped it up to 10 strict because there's such a big range of motion on six bar muscle-ups that I just didn't want to do six strict pull-ups. So I bumped it up to 10. Fitness was achieved. I did not feel shortchanged. Uh, I've got a decent tolerance for GHD sit-ups, so I had no problem in minute two just starting to do GHD sit-ups. But if you weren't there and that much GHD sit-up volume would be no good for you, just plop your butt on the floor and do regular sit-ups. Who cares? You're doing sit-ups. You're good to go. Fitness was achieved. Minute three was rest. On minute four, 10 strict ring dips. It just, my pecs weren't warmed up and everything, so I didn't feel good just jumping into 10 strict ring dips that very first minute. So I just did some push-ups in that minute, and I did some static holds at the top of the ring and some static holds at the bottom, and I did a couple like jumping ring dips. I just moved for that minute to start to use it as a warm-up and didn't worry about, you know, what should have happened in that minute. The next minute, double unders were uh, programmed, and then the final minute was rest. Again, that's six minutes, it's a 30 minute EMOM, so you're gonna cycle through that five times. And so that's just how I did that. Stuck with the strict pull-ups. I stuck personally with the GHD sit-ups. I rested in the rest minutes. By the time that the second iteration came around, I could do the strict ring dips. Good to go. I was in and out in 30 minutes. There was no warm up, there was no cool down. That's just what life dictated that day. Thursday was a rest day, a glorious rest day. On Friday, the linchpin workout of the day was one of the linchpin tests, linchpin test 14, which prescribed is, it's like grace with the air bike, it's disgusting, but beautiful. For time, 15 clean and jerks at, night, at 135 or 95, 30 calories in the air bike for men, 20 for women, and then 15 more clean and jerks, 135 for men, 95 pounds for women blazing fast on that workout, like it's a wheelhouse workout for you and you crushed it, is in the area of five minutes. A lot of people, it could take anywhere from seven to nine minutes-ish, okay? Maybe even pushing 10 minutes. So ballpark, once again, you're telling me you've got 30 minutes to work out? That's a 10 minute or less workout. So you are going to be able to warm up completely, actually, Hit that workout with all your heart and soul, and you'll have time to stretch, cool down, and go home. Easy day. Then on Saturday, we had three three-minute AMRAPs. That's a tongue twister. Three three-minute AMRAPs, and to in keep the tongue twister going, between each three-minute AMRAP, you took three minutes of rest. So I'll do the math for you. Three Three minute AMRAPs is a total of nine minutes of work. Three minutes of rest between is an additional six minutes. And so that's 15 minutes that workout is going to take. And that was, uh, the AMRAPs were comprised of wall ball shots and chest of bar pull ups. Disgusting, Fran ish kind of a thing. So that's going to take 15 minutes, including the rest periods. If you've got a 30 minute window, that gives you 15 minutes to warm up to do a wall ball and a chest to bar pull up. That is extremely reasonable. So again, even with a 30 minute window, if you didn't dilly dally, you're gonna be good to go. Now, you know, one of the examples that I had in there was a longer workout, that was Tuesday's workout, Lynchman Test 5. We discussed how we would uh, chop that up. But as a, general, as a general guideline, let's just talk about another couple workouts and how you could make them happen. Let's say the workout of the day was Murph, the classic hero workout Murph, one mile of running, 
100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air squats, and then another one mile of running, all in a weight vest. It is not uncommon for Murph to take people an hour. Well, that's not going to work in a 30-minute window, right? But let's, let's think about this for a sec. Okay, Murph can take an hour. We've got 30 minutes. I'd like to have maybe a bit of a warm-up, a bit of a cool-down, whatever. So I want Murph to only take me 20 minutes. I can only give Murph 20 minutes of my life today. Well, if it takes an hour, generally, some quick math tells us that 20 minutes is a third of that. So let's do not even a half Murph. Let's do a third Murph. Now, this is not exact, right? Because there's 100 pull-ups. So a third of that is 33.3 pull-ups. We're not doing 0.3. So we're going to get close to a third of Murph. And that would be roughly 1,200 meters of running total instead of two miles. Now 1,200 meters total, 33 pull-ups, 66 push-ups, and 100 air squats. Another way to think about that is the work in Murph, the 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air squats, is 20 rounds of Cindy, okay? So let's just say if a full Murph is 20 rounds of Cindy, well, for our third, we're going to do 7 rounds of Cindy. So we're going to do a total of 1,200 meters of running, so that's a third of the running, and then seven rounds of Cindy. So now my Murph, that I only have 20 minutes to do, looks like a 600-meter run, seven rounds of Cindy, and then another 600-meter run. Do it in the weight vest if you want. That should take you about 20 minutes or less. So again, 30-minute window, mission accomplished, even if the workout of the day is Murph, if you understand these general concepts and then how to deconstruct the workout, you can make it happen and you will be 100% good to go. And if you have something just like a regular Cindy 20-minute AMRAP of 5 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats, you've got 10 minutes to warm up to do those movements, you're going to be good to go. Or you can just start doing Cindy slowly and easily do some ring rows, do some knee push-ups, slowly start to warm up the air squats, and then you will be 100% good to go. Let's take a workout like Nancy, five rounds for time of a 400-meter run, and then 15 overhead squats, 95 pounds for men, 65 for women. A reasonable loading, and Cindy, excuse me, Nancy will take people, depending upon whether you're a ridiculous beast of fitness or more of a normal human being, anywhere from 12 to 18 minutes. So again, Quite reasonable that even on a movement like the overhead squat that a lot of us will have to warm up to get below parallel to get our arms up over our heads and get a, in a good overhead squat position if Cindy even on the longer I mean Nancy on the longer side takes let's say about 18 minutes that's still giving you 12 minutes out of a 30 minute window to warm up to start jogging and to do an overhead squat at 95 or 65 pounds that's not an unrealistic timeline so Fitness is 100% achievable and possible, even with a tight timeline. Now, where it might get a little tricky, and you have to be a little bit more creative, is on a heavy day. One of the big things that I say all the time, I beat this drum at Lynchpin, is that we respect the heavy days. And if we're talking about a 7x1 back squat or a 7x1 deadlift, it can very easily take an entire hour training session to do a beautiful head-to-toe, just general warm-up, then start slowly building up your squat weight or deadlift weight or whatever lift you happen to be doing. Do some warm-up sets for that until you eventually get to your working sets for the 7x1. Then you're going to probably rest, if you're really trying to go heavy that day, anywhere from 2 to 4 minutes between each one of those seven singles, for example, then a little cool down stretch would be good. So an hour goes by easily. Well, now we have 30 minutes. That doesn't sound like it's going to work, so what can we do? Here are some things that I personally have done real life over the last 14 weeks, you know, with our daughter being in our life and, you know, free time just poof, disappearing and all that. I did this recently on a five by five. Uh, if, my, if my memory serves, it was a 5x5 five five back squat day. First of all, 
throw out the numbers that you were squatting or deadlifting before, okay? Because we're, we're doing things different. We've got a limited time window. We're going to have to make some compromises. So whatever the workout happens to be, if you're in a different phase or season of your life, disregard whatever that old number was. Don't even let it get in your head. You're going to lift whatever feels heavy today, given the time that you have available. Or your Cindy score or Nancy score is going to be whatever it is today, given the season of your life, given how you had to rush things. So don't let the old numbers creep into your head. So here's what I did on my 5x5 five five back squat day. And I got a lot done in 20 minutes. It wasn't ideal, but it was real, okay? And again, the other option was me sitting on the couch and just saying, ah, screw it. I can't do a perfectly laid out one hour session. So what's even the point? Don't let yourself fall into that trap. I would. I walked out in the garage and I biked or rode casually for one minute. I got off of that. I did five hip and back extensions on the GHD. Walked over to the squat, squat rack. I did five back squats with an empty barbell. One minute of the bike, five hip and back extensions, five back squats with an empty bar. That took about two minutes to do that. Okay, didn't take much time. I then repeated that again. One minute on the bike or rower, five hip and back extensions. Then I put 95 pounds on the barbell, five back squats. I repeated that again, minute on the bike, five hip and back extensions, five back squats at 135. I repeated that one more time, bump the weight to 185. So now, after only eight minutes in the gym, I've got in four minutes of warming up on the bike or rower. I've got in a total of 20 hip and back extensions, and I've back squatted an empty bar, 95 pound bar, a 135 bar, and a 185 pound bar, four sets of five. I waited another two minutes, and then I did five back squats at 225. I waited two minutes, I put 275 on the bar. Again, you could adjust these weights for whatever made sense for you. Maybe at this point in time, you would only be at 155 on the bar. Maybe at this point in time, you'd be at 600 pounds on the bar. I don't know. You know, Adjust it for you, whatever steps make sense for you. So now, at minute 12, I did my first set of five at 275 pounds. Then at minute 14, then I considered that my first working set for, a five, my, for what my five by five back squat was going to look like on this given day with this given crunched time frame that I have. So on minute 12, my first working set went down. I did set number two at 14 minutes, set number three at 16 minutes, set number four at 18 minutes, and then set number five at 20 minutes. And that first set, like I said, was five, by five at 275 pounds. And then at each two minute interval after that, I just had to make the decision based upon how I was feeling. Do I stay? Do I go up or do I go down? And given the level of sleep that my daughter was not allowing me to have, given the abbreviated warm-up that I had to do, and given the fact that I was resting only two minutes between sets, where traditionally in a 5x5 back squat, I would have taken longer to warm up, I would have um, taken more warm-up sets to build to my working weight, and then I would take longer rest periods between those sets, but that's not what I had available. I stayed at 275 pounds, and I in no way, shape, or form set a PR, and I in no way, shape, or form felt shortchanged. Fitness was 100% achieved, walked back into the house 20 minutes later, victory, success, fantastic. And you can play that same game with snatching, clean and jerking, deadlifting, back squat, whatever it happens to be, there's a way that you can look at the time that you have available and then reverse engineer uh, a warm-up and an increase that makes sense even on a heavy day. The other thing which has been a huge benefit on heavy days is the limited equipment option as it's on the linchpin private track. So even on heavy days, we create a heavy day for people that just have access to dumbbells, generally considering a pair of 50 pound dumbbells for men, a pair of 35 pound dumbbells for women. Dumbbells are a beast and you will not be shortchanged. And generally speaking, you know, if I was going to do this squat day, this heavy day that was prescribed, and if I didn't choose the barbell, I chose to do it with dumbbells. Well, now I had to warm up on this day to a 275 pound back squat. It's going to take me longer 
to warm up my body to move 275 pounds than it's going to take my body to be able to move 250 pound dumbbells. Even though they're undoubtedly challenging, it's still only a grand total of 100 pounds. So I'm going to be ready to move those with some degree of intensity faster than I was ready to move and get to that working weight on the back squat. So if time is an issue, choosing the limited equipment option, the dumbbell option, will not shortchange you, will dramatically improve your strength and fitness, and gets a lot of work done in a shorter period of time, and it is fantastic. So kind of in closing, whatever you've got going on, if you find yourself with a a limited amount of time for whatever reason, doesn't have to be a newborn baby, right? Work changed, your commute changed, you started going back to night school, I don't know what it is, but now you have less time, you've only got 30 minutes a day, you can stay in tremendous shape. And not only tremendous shape, potentially even continue to improve, okay? Get that out of your head that you're just, ah, it's all gone. And it's not as complicated as some people would have you believe to figure out some super fancy way to work out in a short period of time. With a basic understanding of what you're trying to accomplish, you're good to go. So that's it. Hopefully everybody found that valuable and enjoy today's workout.